Hey everybody, welcome to a new episode of Blockchain Central. In our summary of 2018, check out the video here, I talked about how mining profits for individual miners have been consistently dwindling to the point that mining may become essentially non-valuable. Today we'll look at the timeline of mining and see if the crypto mining is really dead. Let's get right into it. If you'd like to know more about crypto mining, you can check out our episode on the subject. But for those needing a quick recap, crypto mining is the process of solving hashing algorithms. These are complicated math equations that are responsible for the encryption of each block on a blockchain. They are responsible for the security and immutability, also contributing to the decentralization of the network. Miners, of course, receive rewards for solving those equations in the form of mining and transaction fees. The former is responsible for the increase in total coin supply with every newly created block. Because of the high value of Bitcoin in recent years, mining became a global industry. Today, many people are disappointed that it's only that, an industry dominated by big players with no place for individual, casual miners. First of all, let's look at the timeline of the mining boom. In the early days, people were using CPUs to mine Bitcoin. If you had a few computers available, you could earn a few bucks per day. At the time, mining was mostly a curiosity enjoyed by crypto enthusiasts and computer geeks. In 2010, a first widely publicized mining success was recorded by the user named Lashlo Hanich, who started mining with a GPU instead of a CPU, and in May 17, managed to mine 1,400 new coins. It wasn't worth much at the time, but served a proof of concept for GPU mining, which gained in popularity in the second part of 2010. Very quickly, people started stacking several GPUs on top of each other in their homemade mining contraptions and started actually making some money in the process. Then, in 2011, field programmable gate arrays, or FPGAs started to become more popular due to their low energy demand. Right after that, ASICs emerged, and we quickly saw an increase in enterprise mining. Not to be left behind, individual miners started joining forces and creating mining pools, in which all participants combined their computing power. It is believed that the bigger mining pools could still be disruptive and affect the probability of even the biggest mining firms. Fast forward eight years later and now, only the people with specialized high-powered backlines are able to profitably mine Bitcoins. Most casual miners end up spending more money on electricity than what they can earn, unless they have access to free or super cheap energy. It is possible to precisely calculate the current profitability ratio for any mining operation by considering factors like hash rate, block reward, mining difficulty, energy prices, and the price of Bitcoin. It is of course extremely challenging to predict mining viability in the future due to the changing difficulty modifier and an ever-changing price of Bitcoin. The fundamental reason why mining becomes less and less profitable is the plummeting price of Bitcoin and the increased mining difficulty. It is often said that all possible profits are now taken by Chinese mining farms located in regions where electricity is subsidized by the Chinese government. It is hard to evaluate the merit of such claims, as they might be coming as salty criticism from those who failed. But the reality is that many mining enterprises struggle to build a sustainable business model. It is understood that if the price of Bitcoin increases, operations might again become more profitable for smaller players. Of course, mining is not only limited to Bitcoin. A common reaction to price volatility among casual mining enthusiasts is switching to mining other coins. This strategy can work to some degree, especially with coins that are negatively correlated to Bitcoin, ones that go up in value when Bitcoin prices go down. It is also important to note that such switches are possible to do primarily with a GPU-based setup. As with ASICs, you usually need different hardware for different hashing algorithms. Despite that, GPU mining is considered irrelevant by many due to the high energy consumption, relatively low speed, and cooling issues. This is confirmed by a significant drop in graphics card sales for the purposes of mining. NVIDIA executives actually expressed doubt that mining-related sales will ever again become an important part of their business portfolio. Add to that the fact that ASIC's mining chips manufactured by Bitmain and Kanan 
who are both probably looking to expand market share at the expense of profits, are also going down in price, and it might spell game over for the GPU mining. The big fear amongst crypto enthusiasts is that once the cost of mining exceeds the revenue, there will be no more incentive for mining, since it is the miners who make the network operational and secure. Some people claim that it would spell doom for the blockchain. It is important to note, however, that with a lower number of miners, the mining difficulty should decrease accordingly, making it more profitable for those who decided to stick around. And even though it is sometimes called a crypto urban legend, some people still hope for the breakthrough of ASIC's technology that would make mining profitable again. When it comes to individual miners, the sediment is that causing mining is still not dead. Profit margins are indeed low, but the community is trying to remain flexible by switching between coins to focus on the profitable ones. It is also said that Monero could be the cryptocurrency to weather many mining turbulences, as it is ASICS resistant and offers more equal opportunities to miners. If you want to see our episode on Monero, you can check it here. When it comes to ASICS equipment manufacturers, the outlook is also pretty much skeptical. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, for example, has lowered their revenue projections for 2019, quoting lower interest in mining related purchases. And finally, big mining farms and mining pools are expected to operate as usual in 2019. But as was said before, a lot depends on how the price of Bitcoin and other crypto looks throughout the year. So is mining dead? It's definitely not. Big players are still operational and individual miners are looking for ways to make their operations fairly profitable. Watch this space and we'll keep you posted. Before you go, please note that this content does not represent financial, legal, or tax advice, nor is it supposed to be understood or interpreted as solicitation to buy or sell any securities, coins, or tokens. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Central to never miss a beat. See you in the next one.